Welcome to podcast. No. <laughs> 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 Greetings from Podcastville. <laughs> the Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Hiring used to be hard. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, a confusing re- review process. But today, hiring is easy. And you can only have it one place that gets it done right. And that's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Right now, ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And right now, today, try ZipRecruiter for free. Did you hear what I just said? Free. My listeners can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. C-H-U-R-C-H. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Right now, Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Let's kick this motherfucking mule. Eddie Bravo's in the house today. What's happening, dog? Oh, shit, where's the music? No more music. We had to cut out the fucking music. Really? Yeah. You got busted? We got warning. Ugh. We got red flagged. That sucks. They sent the fucking feds out. They let people fucking sleep on the goddamn sidewalk. You can camp <laughs> on the sidewalk, but you can't fucking play little clips of music to help the band. So, trust me, you don't understand. You don't understand that. It's taking a piece out of me because that was part of the thing. Giving them shit that I even forgot about. Yeah. It was through my journeys that I even forgot about. I love, like, right now, you know what I'm missing? Tom Morello on Sirius. That's the best show on Sirius right now. What does he talk about? He talks about that style of music. Tom Morello's show on Sirius XM. It's a music show? Oh, my God. He had his fucking mother on the other day. 93 years old. And he goes, tell them the story, Mom, about their first performance ever at Lollapalooza in 1992, 93. <laughs> they go out the night before. You know, she used to bring them up on stage. Huh. 63-year-old retired school teacher. Are you ready for the world's greatest motherfucking rock and roll band? Rage Against the Machine. That's her. Holy shit. So now she's 93, and she's like, you know, fucking three days from dying but she's still sharp man she's like eat your vegetables you know and he's like ma ma relax the vegetables <laughs> tell him about the story and she told the story about when they went to louisiana and new orleans got arrested and they had to go to Lollapalooza and wait for them to get out of jail and she went up on stage and they started fuck the new orleans police she led the cheer oh no he had a dog i got did I ever tell you my story, how I met Tom Morello? I remember one day you, I sat with you and had lunch with him at the old place where we used to hang out. This had to be 20 years ago. But the first time... On Fairfax. Where was, where was the place that me and you saw him with Rogan and we ate a burrito with him? Right next to Coffee Bean on Fairfax and Sunset. There's Coffee Bean and there's a, there used to be a taco place next to it. Oh, now it's uh, a hamburger Baja, place. Baja Fresh. Fresh. You used yes. to eat in there every fucking day. Yeah, yeah. So one day we went, you, me, and Joe, and Tom Morello was sitting there by himself. Yeah. Like, this is Baja Fresh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. And here's Tom Morello from the hottest band. Now, this had to be 99, 2000. <laughs> yeah. And you sat down like I, I, like, I went out. I had to get something. I met him before. You had met him before, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. How the, you- the, this is the craziest story, right? So, uh, you know, I'm, I've always been a big Browns fan, right? Big Cleveland Browns fan. When I was eight, my brother was twelve. His job was to humiliate me. He had a big baseball card collection. I was jealous of the ba- baseball card baseball card collection. So he looked at the. Uh, one of his cards, and he gave it to me. He goes, here, you could have this one. It was the Cleveland Indians back when they were a joke. 30 games behind, first place every day. And it was Dennis Eckersley's rookie card. And he gave me that card, and I'm eight. And I'm like, okay, I love everything about Cleveland from this point on. So that's how I got into Cleveland. Cleveland Indians, Cleveland Cavaliers, Cleveland Browns, since I was fucking eight, dude, eight and ten. Right? Uh, Brian Seib, Dave Logan, all the whole the whole era. And then the fumble and then the driver, it's Biner, Bernie Kozar, Webster Slaughter, all that shit. So then the Browns and moved. When, when they Den- moved. When Denver used to beat them up. Exactly. The drive <laughs> and the fumble. Drive. Yeah, yeah. They killed oh us. God. They oh killed us. God. But anyways, in ninety six, in ninety six, they Art Modell took the team and moved to fucking Baltimore. 
They became the Baltimore fucking Ravens. And now Cleveland, all of a sudden, the Cleveland fucking Browns were gone. Cleveland doesn't have a football team no more. So everybody's pissed. I'm pissed. Everyone's pissed. Like, fuck the Baltimore Ravens. They start blowing up the Baltimore Ravens. And the Cleveland Browns eventually came back, but three years later. So that first year, Cleveland Browns fans didn't know what the fuck to now, do. Who, who became a Cleveland? Who, who, what team? The Cleveland Browns moved to Baltimore and became the Baltimore Ravens. Right. After and the Colts left. After the Colts left, the Colts already went to Indianapolis. But the Browns became the Baltimore Ravens in 1996. That was Ray Lewis's rookie year. And um, that's, that's, that's what they picked in the first round. But anyways, the Browns didn't have a team. So, you know, here comes, you know, the off the off season. They're talking about the Ravens. They start showing off the colors. And everybody, like, everybody from Cleveland, fuck the Ravens, fuck the Ravens. And I was all about fucking the Ravens, too. Uh, but as the season approached... I thought, you know what? Let me check out a fucking preseason game. And it was oh. New York Giants versus Baltimore Ravens. And the only place that was showing it was at that promenade in Santa Monica. There was a place called Yankee Doodles. I don't even know if it's still there, but it's a gigantic sports bar. Two levels. Two level sports, but huge. It's like Dave and Buster's with two levels. And they have downstairs, they got about fucking 50 TVs everywhere. And then upstairs. So Sundays, it's just a fucking football extravaganza there. And I... <clears throat> So I went and the first, you know, there's Browns fans all over the country because the Browns have like, it's, they've been around since like forties or fifties or something like that. So there's fans everywhere. They move, family moves. So there's Browns backers everywhere, but it was the Ravens first year. They had no backers anywhere. They had no outside fans outside of Baltimore. I was, but I wanted to see the game anyway. So I saw uh, New York Giants versus Baltimore Ravens and I became a Ravens fan just by watching it. Because I thought, damn, they had Vinny Testaverde. I'm like, these are the same guys, Leroy Horde. Go, these guys are purple. They're like the purple browns. I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to let Art Modell take football away from me. I'm not going to let him destroy my Sundays. So I just became a Baltimore Ravens fan instantly. So I would show up there every Sunday. And I, they put me, I was the only Raven fan outside of Baltimore. So they put me downstairs. There's nobody there in the fucking corner. I'm watching. I'm at this Everyone's upstairs going nuts, and they got me in a corner with the Baltimore Ravens game, right? And then the Baltimore Ravens played the Rams, St. Louis Rams. And so I'm sitting there. This is 1996, and I'm sitting there, and there's a there's a Rams fan next to me watching, uh, and it's fucking Tom Morello, but I had no idea. I had no idea it was him. I personally didn't have any Rage Against the Machine records. I wasn't really a big Rage Against the Machine fan. I liked that, you know, uh, fuck you, if you do what you told me. That was all cool and everything. But for me, I was actually uh, d doing rap rock too, but I was, uh, Rage Against the Machine was more like Led Zeppelin doing rap. And my style was more Nine Inch Nails doing rap. So, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't that into Rage Against the Machine, I'm just being honest. So I really didn't recognize him, you know what I mean? And we're watching the game, and at halftime, we just start talking, you know, just bullshitting. And um, uh, he asked me, he goes, what do you do? I go, ah, you know, I'm out here in Hollywood trying to make it in music. And I was a strip club DJ at the party. I, I, I DJ at a strip club, but trying to make it in music. And he goes, oh, really? He goes, what kind of band do you have? I'm like, I go, I told him. It's like Rage Against the Machine, except you know how they're like Led Zeppelin-y? I go, we're not like that. We're more Nine Inch Nails-y. And he's like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> and he goes, you know, that's my band. I said, what? What's, what do you mean? He goes, I'm the guitar player for Rage Against the Machine. I go, fuck you. And he goes, yeah, and he was. And he showed me, you know, then he proved it, obviously. And then uh, it was a trip, you know, because he ends, he's a big Rams fan. He's Even to this day, he's a Giants, giant Rams fan. So for, you know, the rest of the game, we we're just, I was just like, Pfft put a big foot in my mouth. I was like, mm -hmm. sort of like talking shit on, blowing up my band and kind of bringing Rage Against the Machine down a little bit to <laughs> Tom Morello. <laughs> I was, but anyways, that's, and then I ran into him a few other times, like you said, like maybe four or five other times I'd run into him somewhere. I'm like, hey dude, remember me from the, the Ravens fan? Remember? He goes, oh shit, that's right, Yankee Doodles, 96. So, uh, but that's it. He, he probably don't remember me no more. It's, it's crazy it's been a while. how you, I saw I saw people and they went away. Like, I go through that phase. Like, when I first got to the comedy store, it was Tommy Lee. <clears throat> Tommy Lee would come down Wednesdays, Thursdays, get a drink at the front bar, talk to Chewy. I never said two words to him. But it was nice to see Tommy Lee. And if yeah. it wasn't Tommy Lee, it was a crazy guitar player from Poison. 
he's crazy. Oh, uh, uh, this is when he was drinking. Ah, shit, he's crazy. So uh, I would CC see, Deville. CC Deville. I would yeah. see him. Uh, who else did I see a lot then? Slash. I would see Slash. Like one night we were doing comedy at the Union, and Slash was there. Then I went to Burbank Airport, and Slash was there. Yeah. Then I got to the Riviera, and Slash was there. <laughs> then the next day I went to, the, I had to walk through a convention, and Slash was there. <laughs> you know, it was like, and then I never saw Slash again, ever again. Yeah. It's like so weird how, and now I don't even know who. I, I was. Hanging- I could stand the next. I could be standing next to. Fucking Nick Jonas, and I don't know exactly. I don't exactly. know who the fuck they are. Yeah, uh, you had Ricky Rocket on your podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, right. he's an old friend of mine. Yes, yeah. we used to hang out for a while back out because he he did jujitsu at Jean Jacques as well, and we became friends. And back in '97, uh, we had a plan to put together a MMA magazine before it was even called MMA. It was called No Holds Barred for a while, and we we're going to put out a magazine called No Holds Barred. He was going to finance it. And I was going to be like the editor or whatever, right? That was the plan. So we thought, shit, if we're going to do this, it's going to be awesome. We got to start going to UFCs. And this is back in 97 when the UFCs were like underground. You know, the first UFC, first two UFCs, first four or five actually were huge. And then they, they lost their cable contract and they went underground and you could only see it on satellite. And, um, plan, you know, uh, so there was this one oh. UFC coming up in Kemper, Louisiana. It was like maybe... 3,000 people capacity. Joe, that's when Joe was backstage reporter. <laughs> it's hilarious. So we went to that, you know, to, tr- to report on it and, and interview fighters and stuff. The magazine never came out, kind of, you know, just flaked on it. Did you know Joe, uh, Joe then? Barely. I knew he was, uh, he trained at Jean Jacques, but I had never run into him. And I was, and uh, Rick is like, yeah, that dude, he, he, he's on news radio and he trains at Jean Jacques. I'm like, oh yeah, I heard about him. I haven't run into him. I'm like, and we actually talked. They were like, hey, dude, you train at Jean Jacques? And, and uh, he said, yeah. So we, that's where we kind of first sort of like, re- like met. Like, and then, uh, you know, a couple of years later, he started taking uh, the classes that I was in, and then you know, we just from that point, and that was we crazy just how that evolved. <laughs> Because I came in around that time. Yeah, I, was t- I met you like in 2000, 2001. No, a little earlier. Was it? Yeah. Earlier than 2001? Yeah. I've been here since 97. Right. Okay. I started fucking around with Joe like 98. I met you like 99 and a half. As far as I remember, we met at the comedy store, right? Yes, yeah, cause on a Sunday night. Yeah, that was back... At in the in two thousand, that's when you trained with him. That's all I know. You yeah. weren't a teacher then. Yeah, no. You trained no. with. I him. was a purple belt, and he was a blue you belt. Guys, it was it was intolerable to be around you two together <laughs> because you would just talk about sweeps and shit, <laughs> and I didn't know what the fuck. I thought he was talking about the old school sweeps. Yeah. Like in New York, the Kung Fu sweeps where I tried to kick your leg out from under you. Yeah, I yeah. Spin around. Those are still legit. <laughs> They're legit, but nobody, I always say that, 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 I don't even know, that would used to be, those things in the 70s when I was growing up, you swept off a spinning back kick. Like you did the spinning back kick twice and you went to fucking get that guy at competitions. Remember, I used to go to competitions where you couldn't kick the face. Yeah. But you could kick from the here. It was called semi contact. Yeah. If you kick, touch the face, you got disqualified. Yeah. So I always aimed that heel for the midsection, but I would set them up. And if I, I and if I knew that they were coming at me, if like if they were right hand uh, righties, I would take that left leg. That's how I used to win those competitions. This is when I was like ten. I just figured out that sweeping was the way to go. And I became a sweeper in those competitions. So from 10 to 14, I used to just sweep people. That was my fucking, if I caught your leg, I would just sweep you. And then I trained with people who just swept people. This was way like basic karate. Yeah, There was no Muay Thai in the neighborhood, none of that shit. There was no Jiu Jitsu, there was nothing. It was Aikido. (coughs) Richard Bow had an Aikido school on 68th Street. And everything else was karate with the fist, Hassan's father. Yeah. So How crazy is that? That was my yeah. first karate teacher was Hassan's father. But I didn't go to competitions with Hassan's father. I didn't start going to competitions t- 
till I moved to New Jersey. And I started training with this Vietnam vet who was fucking nuts. Why did you move to New Jersey? Because my mother had the bar in that neighborhood. Mm. So at that time in that part of New Jersey, the big schools were Fu Jiao Pai Kung Fu, who, by the way, are still there on the second floor above a Carvel. What's a Carvel? Ice cream store. Oh, shit, okay. And then the other big school was Gushin Ru Karate. It was like, that was it. So you were either, and it was like a gang, it was like being part of a gang then. Like if we saw you in the mall and shit, it was like the karate <laughs> kid. <laughs> you better step aside, shit. <laughs> Fujiao Pai in the house, you know, and then we were like, some of us would know each other, but pretty much, you know, that's Ted Planet over there, watch out. <laughs> I'm over here repping fucking Marcelo Garcia. Don't even, don't even come over here with your coronavirus and shit. Like that's, <laughs> that's how you thought at that age. You really did. You took it that personal. You know, and they made the karate kid. Remember how they, they, that's how those people treated people. You were part of a gang now. You idiots hung out together in school. You know, you were the karate kids and shit <laughs> until you went up to a black school and you got lit up. And then there was no more karate kids. <laughs> that was the end of it. He went to like some beach and he picked on some skinny black dude and he just lit all four of you up. And yeah. that would be the end. It would yeah. take one beating. I forget who I was with when we got a beat. I used to, when I was a kid, there was a time when I lived in New York City and I would just go to, Union. I lived in New York City, but I would go to Union City with my mother. So I had to find something to do. So I joined the karate school while she was at that, at her bar. That would get me out of there for an hour and let me walk. Yeah. And I became friends with a couple of karate kids. And that was the first time at night that I would tell her, like, at seven, ma, I got to go. And I would take my gi and me and these creepy kids. I hung out with two creepy kid karate sets. My first one was this kid. He had to be... 20 something he was a pervert but he didn't work him he didn't work up the balls to pervertize <laughs> like you know what i'm saying he hung out with this dude named pino who was my age and my family knew his family we called him like crazy mike he lived with his mother he would yell at her call her a fucking cunt we were kids now me and pino came from a cuban house this kid mike was from a white house the first time i heard him call his mother a cunt I almost had a fucking heart attack. You understand me? Like, that was the first house I ever seen that white. Like, he had a brother and a sister, and they all abused the mother and told the father to shut up. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? But it didn't matter. Every They were the supers of a building. And we would go down to that basement at night and fuck each other up to death. Me, Pino, Crazy Mike, and there was somebody else. Supito. Supito. Supito was... The super's kid. So that's how we got access to the building. Supito. <laughs> he was a Cuban kid with a mustache. And we would just fuck each other up. But Mike was a man. So when you sparred with Mike, you got better. So I tried to spar with Mike every night. We'd kick, you know, real light and stuff. We would go to Honda. We bought our own. In those days, we had targets. And you had to hold them. And it was a uh, like three-inch pad on a piece of wood. And that's what we'd do at night. <laughs> and then when I got old, I got in with a different clique, Glenn Cologne and Mario Diaz. Mario Diaz was a Chinese Cuban. He spelt his name with an E instead of an A like I spelt it. And his father was like a Chinese doctor and shit, and, and he would never be home. They were never home, the parents. So we'd all go home, do homework, and then we'd head to Mario Diaz's house. And the family had money, and they had a nice basement. But that's when we went crazy. That's when we would let Bravo back crazy. We used to go to Chinatown, and we would buy Iron Palm Technique, and we would hit a bag every night. We had the tubs. We would put our hands on. We would work the Iron Palm. We would hit bricks with our fucking hands. That's, the, fuck. that's the Joey Karate story no, right there. We were there. crazy. We were Prequel. crazy. Yeah. We were crazy. <laughs> and we used to beat each other up so much that his father had, like, walls that were nice. But we started punching through the walls. <laughs> like, I swear to God, we would be fighting and we'd just punch through the walls. There had to be th three holes every three feet 
from like me trying to sidekick you and you get out of the way and my foot will go through the wall. Like that type of shit. Nobody ever got caught, cut. Nobody ever got stitches. We got a lot of bruises and there was a lot of broken noses in there. Dog, I had a broken nose. They must have hit me 15 times with the broken nose. Like, like that's why I think I broke my nose one time. Or I went in there with a broken nose one time. We just, we used to just beat each other up at night. Friendly beat up. Yeah. We were friendly. Not MMA, kick you in the head type shit. No, 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 no. If you kicked, you were only allowed to kick the body. We would always go for the, the stomach. Front kicks, that type of shit. You know, I did karate for six months. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, got a, before you I, got a, I got a green stripe on my white belt. I took one test to get that stripe in. And uh, my on uh, the results, it's like a piece of paper. It said, excellent overhand knife strike. So I thought that was my shit. I thought that was my shit. So while I was doing karate, um, I was living in an apartment building. And above me was this huge Russian dude. Or, I don't know if he was, Yeah, I think it was... He was either Russian or Polish. And um, he fucking hated me because I had this girlfriend. Only girl ever that I've ever um, had a relationship with that loved being really loud while we had sex. Like, she was loud How as fuck. 22. And, like, we'd had the first time I had sex with her, she just starts screaming. And I had to, like, shut the window and cover her face. People going, shut the fuck up. The Russian upstairs was pounding on the fucking ceiling. So he hated me, right? And I knew I knew we were going to have a confrontation, you know, one of these days, you know. One of these days we're going to run into each other. So I asked my instructor, my karate instructor, and I told him the story. And I told him how big he is. I go, what do you think I should do? You think I should come after him with the overhand knife strike? And he said, no. He goes, this is what you should do. You should jump. No, seriously. You should jump, leap at him, and punch both his ears. Jesus. And it'll knock him out. It'll fuck up his equilibrium, he told me. So I'm like, shit, are you sure? He goes, yes, that's what you do. I'm like, fuck, that's what this guy fucking told me, right? I was going to, I would have done that too. I would have done that. So me and my girlfriend were, I was cranking Allison Chains, never forget this. And he started jumping up on the, on the floor, pounding the ceiling. And you know how old school uh, uh, lights like for your, for your room have like a glass covering? I don't know what they call those, but it's a glass covering that you screw on. when the, when like the a light, shade almost. Yeah, it's like a shade. It was a big glass one. And you have to screw it off to change the light bulb, and then you screw it back on, and it's like it looks kind of it has like a seventies feel. And he was pounding, and that thing was rocking and shaking, and I cranked it even fucking louder. I was pissed, and he starts jumping, and the thing fell and broke, shattered. And and my girlfriend was putting on her makeup like off to the side. If it would have landed on her head, she she could have been seriously injured. And it was loud, dude. And then all of a sudden, he started jump. He stopped jumping. And I fucking freaked out. I got all the glass and I put it in a dustpan and I went upstairs, nut, pounded on his door and threw all the glass like against his door. And I was ready to throw, throw that jumping double fist <laughs> punch to the ears. I was ready, but he never came out. He was just silent. And there's all this glass just sitting at, the, at his doorstep. And then I went back downstairs and I never seen the guy ever again. Never heard a peep from him. <laughs> Dude, he would have killed me. He would have fucking humiliated me. I was going to come after him with that shit. You that's don't, don't that's what know, my instructor but, told me. But you don't know once you knock on somebody's door, bro, they might just shoot. So thank God he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. He would have fucked me fuck up. This guy was huge. He would have fucked me up. Man. So what do you think about this fucking carnivore fucking diet? <laughs> this carnivore. <laughs> carnivore disease. I, I need carnivore. bread, man. I'm sorry. No, he's talking about the coronavirus. The coronavirus. Oh. What do you think? I think it's just like Ebola and Zika and SARS. Every two years, there's this new thing, you know? And uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. There's different theories. There's one theory that says, here's one theory. They're saying, um, because uh, apparently, even though your phone says 5G, they haven't rolled it out yet. We actually don't have 5G. Because if we do have 5G, my phone says 5G all the time. And it sucks. LTE crushes my 5G. But but apparently, I could be wrong. They're saying, no, no, 5G isn't even rolled out yet. 
they're just it's just saying it on your phone and they're just advertising it but they're not even using it yet when they do use it it's gonna fuck people up that's what they're saying there's a conspiracy theory that 5g it's gonna fuck people up like the waves the way it works is gonna and the symptoms from 5g apparently are like a radiation sickness symptoms like flu symptoms like if you have radiation sickness you it's, it feels like you have the flu apparently this is what i'm hearing this is just the theory so they're saying one theory is that wuhan was the first city in china to roll out 5g fucked everybody up so they blame it on the corona and they're saying everyone's got corona when really the 5g's fucking everybody up that's just a conspiracy theory that's what i'm reading who the fuck knows i think i think it's um another theory is it's just they do this every couple of years, Zika, Ebola, SARS, to fuck up elections. Like, um, obviously, w- when it comes to Trump, the fake Russian hoax that failed, uh, the fake rape claims failed, the fake impeachment failed, all that shit. They're trying to frame him and tr- they're trying to fucking destroy him, and it's all not working. So uh, the one thing that Trump has done for us is he's he's made our economy better than than, and it's been in 50 years or something like that maybe that's a lie i don't know maybe our economy sucks but i know my jujitsu association is stronger than ever and that's a a direct reflection of the economy in my opinion i think for me the economy is fucking is great so when people say dude the economy is better than ever it's better than it's been in 50 years I, i agree with that because uh 10th planet's blowing the fuck up so um the way, like their last hope, there's a conspiracy theory. The last hope is, okay, let's do a some another Zika, Ebola operation where um, uh, we scare everybody, you know, uh, apparently 20,000 to 50,000 people a year die from the flu. So there's people dying all the time of the flu, but you never hear about it. But if you take this human coronavirus, which is on the back of Lysol, if you look at the back of a Lysol, uh, spray can it says it lists all the viruses that it kills and it says human coronavirus and it, uh, So it's not like it's new. It's just like the technical name for a kind of flu flu is like there's a bunch of different strains of flu and they have a bunch of different names so one theory is This is just a psyop to fuck the economy up and that it's working if that's what it is It's working because the stocks uh, I don't know anything about stocks, but apparently they tumbled and like the economy is like getting taking a big hit. So that's a theory that it's all just an operation, just like Zika, just like Ebola, you know, and then one person died in the United States and everybody's freaking out. 50,000 people a year die from the flu. So you got, I mean, six people a year die from like coconuts falling on their head or something like that. So one person died in Washington and it was an old lady. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. I have no idea. Another theory is, man, there's there's a theory that <clears throat> I don't know. The people are saying we can't even see viruses. They're too small to even see. Like we could see bacteria, but even through an electron microscope, apparently we can't see viruses. So that's why when you go to uh, Google and you, 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 you put in virus, it's going to show you a bunch of CGI pictures. Like it's never like an actual picture of a virus in a cell. It's all CGI and, and when you do that you're like shit so people um, I don't know man I don't know maybe like how do we know what the fuck is going on how do we know if we can't see it so I, I've grown into a person that I don't believe shit unless I could see it or I could prove it for myself otherwise you don't have to believe in shit you could just say I don't know I don't believe you but I don't know I don't, you don't have to make a choice you know like oh you, ha- you either have to believe or not like I don't know dude you know after so many god how many lives does it take how many more Ebolas and all? How many more before you go, okay, enough of the shit? How many does it take? Could people it? people forget about, like, they, they're doing this every two years. It's always a new fucking virus. Could it even be nothing and, like, just it's something to get us to talk about it? Because like, that's all anyone's talking about. If you about. talk about it, it affects the economy. That's what they're saying. That's a conspiracy theory. I don't know. I mean, well, I don't well, know. How, much, how, much, how many millions of dollars has Corona beer lost? It's like... Tens of millions of dollars, right? More people die of Corona beer than of the virus. Fuck. That's a fact. People getting drunk on that shit, have liver failure, you know? So I don't know what to think about this shit. They're just so know. much. All I know is that the left is politicizing the shit out of it. They're blaming Donald Trump for the fucking coronavirus. They're blaming them. They're blaming him. The New York Times put up a, an article. Uh, we should call this the Trump virus. If you get sick, 
you you know who to blame. So they're the left is politicizing this shit. They're why, taking, why blame Trump? Because he cut back on it, whatever whatever you could think of. It's know. like okay, it's like it's like this is like at all. It's like it's like how do you like how could we blame Trump? Okay, it's like the, it's like the, this is how they're coming up with the ideas. How could we blame Trump? He uh, let's just say he cut funding to the CDC. Yes, let's say that. Did he? No, but let's just say it. So they put out these reports that he cut funding to the CDC and everyone's like, oh, my God, what a, what a fucking time to do this during the coronavirus. Meanwhile, he didn't cut shit. It's a complete lie. There, you, what we're seeing now, we're seeing that she, you always you always uh, are suspicious of what politicians say and what you hear on the news. You're, you're, people always say, yeah, I don't believe that shit. I don't believe. But to actually be able to see which like to hear their lies and know their lies that's new that's new we're actually watching them and specifically knowing what the lies are you know what i mean so they're trying to blame trump for the fucking virus for the, like one person dying in washington let's blame trump let's crash the economy they want an, an apocalyptic event like the left because trump is busting them that's what's going on right now trump is busting bu bu think about the impeachment uh the whole impeachment thing was about trump calling the president of the Ukraine and asking him to look into the corruption the Bidens are doing in Ukraine. Look at these scams they're running, these tax scams. You know, look into that shit. And so that's what the impeachment is about. The impeachment is about Trump is trying to dig up dirt on his political rival because he's running for president, Joe Biden. Look, let's impeachment for trying to dig up dirt. Meanwhile, Biden is on video sitting at the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations, sitting there bragging, bragging that he got a prosecutor fired from the Ukraine who was going after his son's company in Ukraine. So uh, Joe Biden put, put his, his son, Hunter Biden, on the board of Burisma, an energy company, corrupt ass energy company that a prosecutor was looking into and seizing assets and stuff. So there were all... Uh, to, to Joe, because Joe Biden was assigned to Ukraine. Like, that was his shit. He was the vice president, and Obama put him in charge of Ukraine. So Burisma's going, dude, get this fucking prosecutor out my fucking ass, right? So Biden said, okay, of course, because his son's on the goddamn board. Of course he's going to get that. So he's at the CFR. You can watch this on YouTube. You can you watch. There's, there's all the, he's bragging. And um, he says... He's, t he's telling all these Illuminati guys saying, hey, listen, I told the guy, I said, listen, you better fire that prosecutor. And listen, I'm listen leaving in six hours. Where were we living? We were living in like six hours, right? Yeah, six hours. I told him, I go, you're not going to get your billion dollars in aid unless you fire the prosecutor. And then he said, you know what he said? He goes, you don't have the authority. You're not the president. He goes, you know what I said? Call Barack and see what happens. And everyone's laughing. All these old motherfuckers are laughing. Council on Foreign Relations. That's Rockefeller shit. And he's bragging in front of all these people, these old people who actually make all the laws. And now he goes, and guess what? Boom, he was fired. And they're all laughing. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So it's on video. He was holding back a billion dollars. Do you know what they do? Is they get a billion dollars in aid. Let's, we got to help Ukraine. They're getting tortured. Let's send them a billion. And everybody, they're tugging at everybody's hearts. Yes, it's, uh, let's sign this bill. Send them a billion. No one's getting no fucking aid. When we send a billion dollars of aid to countries, no one's getting that money. That's all going in people's pockets. You know what they do? They, they, let's say maybe half of it goes to whatever corrupt politicians in the Ukraine are getting it. And the other half, the deal is uh, donate to our foundations. And that's how they, they um, launder it through their foundations as donations. So that's, that, that's how they make the deals. That's what Trump's busting. Trump's busting all the shit. And the only reason Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was on the board, he has no experience in energy. He didn't even show up. He's just on a board and he gets $80,000 a month from Ukraine tax money. So they're just trading tax money. That's all they're doing. All this tax money. We'll send you a billion. You send 500 back here. And it's a lot of these motherfuckers. That's why they're going after Trump. Because he's bust. It's not just Biden. Biden's running for president. He's running for president for protection. Because if you're running for president, they they like if he wasn't running for president and, and Trump said that, he said, hey, listen, look into all this shit Biden's doing and he wasn't running for president. That's totally legal. They'd have it open up an investigation and they'd crush him. Biden knew that he, this was going down. So that's why he's running for president. He's got protection. You can't come after me. You're coming after a political. You can't uh, attack a political rival. We could impeach you. So that's why the impeachment never happened, because when it got down to the facts, it, there was he did nothing. 
He did nothing wrong. He was looking into corruption. So if they're willing to do that to the fucking president, dude, they're trying to frame him. And that's not the first time, the whole Russian collusion thing. That's what's the investigation on how that started. That's what's going on right now. But as they were trying to, as they were investigating with Bob Mueller and all that shit, dude, they were just trying to frame him because he's busting everybody. He's not part of DC. So they brought in Trump because they knew he had, he had big balls. It's not his idea. What they recruited you, what, Trump. What about your boy, Adam, Adam Schiff? What was that? Dude, Adam Schiff? Dude. Don't get him started. Oh, Adam man, Schiff. Adam Schiff. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that guy is hilarious. That guy is like, so, so the call, the call, the impeachment call, was it, was it was something like this. It was like, hey, look into the Bidens. They're doing some corrupt ass shit, right? Something like that, right? Look into the Biden. So uh, the, they didn't think Trump was going to release the transcript. So they made up a call. They were, Schiff was going to go in front of Congress and make up this gangster call, like, like something out of a fucking, like a Tony Montana movie. <laughs> if they're a Tony Montana movie, I'm an idiot, but um, like it's an old gangster movie, right? Scarface or something. And uh, so before Adam Schiff got up into Congress and just read this bullshit call, like, hey, listen, I want you to dig up dirt on Biden my political rival on, and I'm only going to tell you this seven times. All right. And you don't call me and he's pretending like he's reading it. You don't call me. I'll call you. And I want you to dig up a lot of dirt on Biden. Meanwhile, what he didn't know is Trump released the transcript before he made that, that, uh, before he got up to, in Congress and pretended he was reading the transcript, the transcripts totally innocent. He's just like, yeah, look into Biden. That guy's a fucking corrupt motherfucker. Yeah. He's stealing our fucking money. You know what I mean? You look into that motherfucker. That's what you're supposed to do. But he didn't make it look. He Schiff made up the phone call. He fucking made it up. He, they didn't think Trump was going to release the transcript. There's a there's a there's a, a movie going on, a series going on right now in D.C. You follow that shit? It's very entertaining. Very entertaining. Like I was telling Lee the other day on Sunday's podcast, it feels like I'm living in a dream as it is. Then I go home. And I watch world news tonight, and I see these people, and it's like a fucking joke. To me, it feels like a fucking joke. Yeah. It was like how I felt like when I was a kid, and white kids would tell me a show was funny, and I would watch it, and I wouldn't laugh. Yeah. And I thought it was a joke, you know? Like, when I first started doing blow, I didn't get high for the first six months. I thought people were pulling my leg. People like I did coke. It was the best feeling in the world. I'd do coke and nothing would happen. <laughs> nothing would happen. It was six months. Nothing happened. Then I drank beer with it. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Uh, beer and show. coke? Yeah. Okay. But before then, I wouldn't drink. I would just do coke, and it wouldn't do nothing to me. The first six months, I did it. Yeah, you know, I never was a coke guy at so, all. No, no, no. But no. it makes sense. Most most dudes who do coke drink too. Like no, no, booze but, and coke. Well, what, 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 what my point was that I, when I first started doing coke, I thought it was a joke. Like people would tell me, "Oh my god, I did this coke and it blew my mind." It wasn't getting me high, Eddie. I would do it, and nothing would happen, and I'd look around and people would be like, you know, making faces and fucking. Talking endlessly, and I'm like, how come that shit don't happen to me? And then one night, I drank a case of beer with it, and I'm like, oh, shit. But my point is that this is how it feels right now when I watch what's going down in Washington. Yeah. They're all, all the they're news. all. It's, yeah. just, it's like a fucking joke. It's like a, a Telemundo novella, it yeah. feels like. Yeah. yeah. They're all trying, all of them. They're all, the only reason, the only reason Fox News is getting the real shit now. Because if, like, Darth Vader ran as a Republican and won Fox News, their job is to blow up the Republicans. So they'll spin everything just like Fox CNN News. does. Fo Fox's job is to support the Republican no matter who it is. So if it was fucking Adolf Hitler, they would support him, right? No matter what, they're gonna, they were supporting <clears throat> the Bushes. But it's the only, the only network that supports the Republican. Before, before Fox, it was all liberal. CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, whatever they thought, they're going to shove it down your fucking throat. So Fox came up as, a, you know, one voice for the Republicans. And there's a lot of corrupt Republicans. All the Bushes, are you kidding? The Bushes were the Dons. George Bush Sr., that guy was, he was number one. He was right up there with the Rockefellers. 
you know, so, and he was a Republican. So um, my point is the, uh, the fact that Trump ran as a Republican, he used to be a Democrat. He has, he has some Republican values, some Democratic values, but the plan was to clean up all this corruption. So the, the plan was, okay, you'll run as a Republican. We'll have one spot Fox. They're finally going to get like real shit. You know, because again, they would lie. They would spin everything to the Republican side. But the fact that Trump is uh, uh, fucking up all this, everybody should be concerned about these tax scams because they're taking our money. I'm concerned about my money. I give a lot of a lot of money to the government, and they're stealing this shit. They're stealing all our money, and Trump's is showing you how they're stealing all their money with these trade deals with China. The reason why everyone's getting the shit in China. Because all these fucking trade deals that they've been signing up for decades. China, China's raking in and we're getting fucked. You see old clips of Donald Trump when he's in the 80s and the 90s. There's all these clips. He's like, dude, who is making these deals? We're getting fucked here. Because if I, they go, uh, Oprah goes, would you ever run for president? He's all young and shit, good looking. And he, yeah, he said, no, nah, no, nah, I love my life. I love my life. I love my family. I don't want to run for president. But if I ever did, it would be to uh, fix these trade deals. Like, who's making these trade deals? We're getting screwed screwed left and right our country's going down the toilet someone needs to save this shit so he was always talking about the shit that he's doing now he he fixed the china shit did you fix that um it's uh, some say that the coronavirus has something to do with the uh, something to do with what's going on with the trade deal i don't know but he fixed Na- nafta was terrible companies were companies were moving out the last for the last few decades they were all moving out because it was too expensive to stay here the, the country was going to shit now all the companies are moving back for the money because now it makes sense because of the new trade deals it, you make more money it makes more sense to make everything in the united states that's the plan the plan is to fix all the shit they've been doing for the last 40 years that's the fucking plan that's why they're going after them. Hollywood's going after them because they're all in bed together. All of them. Hollywood, the media, everybody, all the big companies, Time Magazine, New York Times, Washington Post. Everybody is going. They're all going after them. They're all going after them. You know what I mean? And here we have Fox. They're like, we want, they're going to uh, put a positive spin on everything Republican, but it just so happens that they're getting the facts. Because the facts are, is Donald Trump was framed, framed that Russian collusion shit. They framed him. They set him up. It was all a setup. And what's happening right now today is they're going back how it all started. And they're going, that's what this coronavirus is a distraction. That's another reason that the coronavirus is good for the Democrats, because it's slowing down the investigation on how the whole Russian collusion thing started. And when you look into those facts, shit, and the people involved and all the fake warrants they got, the four, the fake uh, FISA warrants and all the time, the, the lies, we're getting like into the, the details, the details of this case, the case that uh, of framing Trump, dude. They framed Trump. They gave him Russia. That's the worst shit. They went after him. They gave him the worst shit. Russia, rape, racism. They gave him the worst shit and nothing stuck. I mean, when Mexicans hate Donald Trump because they, they, they think he said Mexicans are all filthy animals. When he didn't say that, he was talking about gang members and the criminals like MS-13. He was saying, uh, MS-13, the criminals, the fucking animals, we're going to send them all back, right? So this is CNN goes, oh, well, you know what we could do with this? We'll just say, we'll do this. They'll say, hey, look what Donald Trump said about Mexicans. And they edit it and goes, they're filthy animals. We're going to send them back. So Mexicans' fucking heads exploded. That's why Mexicans hate them because CNN put out some... Uh, bullshit. He never said Mexicans were filthy animals. He said gang members were filthy animals. That's what he was saying. But no one, no one cares about that. No one cares about that. That's how powerful the media is. The media is super powerful. Super powerful. Well, last night I realized something. I was watching TV with my wife last night, 60 minutes or whatever the fuck. And they were talking about, uh, it was a commercial and how they tricked it. They tricked the wording out of it, and they said, uh, so, uh, here's what they said, be, be sure to watch CBS on Tuesday to pick your, to see who gets nominated or something, to see who's your next president. The way they worded it was, 
This is who's going to be your next president, not to who's going to run for the election. You follow what I'm saying to mm-hmm. you? So they were, they were telling you, find out who's going to be your president. It was like a mental wash type fucking thing. I caught it, and I was like, ooh, that didn't sound right right there. So I know the media is always fucked. You know, that's why I don't watch fucking dick. That's why. Yeah. Like, I don't even, I got to ask you guys a question. You're both pretty smart dudes. What the fuck am I? Am I a liberal? Am I a Republican? Am I a Democrat? Am I far to the right? Do I hang to the left? I don't even know what this shit is. Yeah, when I grew up, uh, what is it? the right sounded like shit. It was like, oh, they're all about family values. They're all about uh, Christianity. They're, they don't want to. They don't want me to have fun. I want to grow my fucking hair and get drunk, get wasted, fuck chicks. You know, fuck being a Republican. They're trying to c- c- control us. You can't control me. I'm free. I'm a fucking right. You know, speed metal songs and. Um, but when you have a kid and you grow up, you realize shit. I thought they were trying to keep us from that. They weren't. They want the kids to be fucked up. They want that shit. The left wants. That's what it is. It's like, hey, you could be free to be, be you know, chase your dreams, go go to Hollywood, be a rock star, and be. In, they want. That's how they break families up. It's an operation. The operation is break the fucking family up. So it sounds like a great thing when you're a kid being a liberal and free and you know being able to do what you want. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be a Christian. Fuck family values. I don't have any kids. But when you have a kid, you realize pff, family values are everything, man. If you're around family values, you're a fucking piece of shit. You go to church. You know what I mean? I don't go to church, Maybe. but I believe in God. I believe in no, God. No, no, I'm not asking you because of that. Yeah. I just, I don't go to church. My wife goes to church with mercy. Do I like it? I don't like where she goes, but they have a good time. It makes them feel good. Yeah. They're gone you know. in and out. Uh, I believe in the value of family. I mean, it's, it's my whole life right yeah. now. Yeah, that's a family. Republican value. Like, Republican is... Uh, uh, Gun rights, Second Amendment, family values, I'm down with that. Those two are very important. Guns are very important to me. Who, like, why would you give a fuck how many bullets I got in my fucking clip? Why would you care if there was 15 or 9? Why are you wasting your time on that? Sounds like there's something else you're thinking about. Inch by inch, they're trying to take all our shit. You can't do it all at once. They ain't stupid. You got to reduce the gun size. Why are you worried about what the size of my fucking gun? Why are you worried about that? So you're trying. They're trying to disarm us to control us. They can't control us when we have guns. They can't. Were well, you going to go to Texas or Missouri? Shit. Go to Missouri and try to fucking round them up. Shit. You see what happened in Virginia? They tried to uh, implement some crazy gun control laws in Virginia. Dude, thousands of people showed up with fucking rifles and machine guns, and they went up to the like, you ain't taking this shit. Not a, there was no violence at all. There was no, no, no uh, agent provocateurs to start shit. They weren't gonna go there. Everybody was dressed up like a fucking Navy SEAL. Go, you ain't taking my shit. Why are they concerned? Like some kid shoots up a fucking school, so uh, it makes sense to give up my guns. Does that that make sense? It's so retarded. I should, uh, what do you want a big gun for, huh? Like, why do you care what size my fucking gun is? If I had a bazooka, it wouldn't, that doesn't mean I'm more dangerous because I have a bazooka. If I had an AK-47, that doesn't make me more dangerous. That makes me more safe. That makes me more safe. We have some fun with a bazooka. (laughs) You know what I mean? You know what? Those little ones? Oh, I'd be fucking people up. I'd be shooting the I just I just want to keep my shit. family safe. You I'd know what I mean? Blowing That's up it. hummus joints left and right. I see hummus on your menu. Yeah. I would just fucking go there at night with a little <laughs> a bazooka in the back like, of the super. Like the Blues Brothers. Remember when we sh- when they sh- <laughs> Yeah. You think I'm kidding you? What's the matter, though? You have flashbacks of Vietnam? <laughs> you know, right? You start looking around the room. All well, wait, let me ask you guys this, because like I'm I'm not political. At all. I, I I I specifically don't vote because I think they're all liars. And I know I know how you feel about Trump, but you said you even said earlier like there are a bunch of like shady Republicans. So like, yeah. let's say like Ted Cruz had won instead of Trump, or one of the other Republicans had won. Do you think this would still be happening? I like Ted Cruz. I like what he's saying. Okay. You know, when when you I I never paid attention to politics 
politics at all. I just figured it was all bullshit, whether it was Republican or Democrat. Yeah, that's what I, I just am. figured everybody's full of shit, right? That's that's a, that's what they want you to think. They're, you're easier to control that way because even though you don't watch the news and you're not paying attention to what's going on in Congress, even though you don't believe the mainstream media, that's what you're going to believe anyways because you're not watching the news at all. You don't believe in it. But then you hear a story from this guy at the gym, this guy at work. Oh, did you hear about Trump? Don't, you're going to believe that shit anyways because that's all you know. You think you're not paying attention, but you are paying attention. They would rather have people not pay attention. So that, but they had me. I wasn't paying attention at all. George Bush's. I knew they were. I wasn't paying attention to what was going on in Congress, but I was like fascinated with looking into the Bushes and the Clintons and all that shit and all the dirty shit they did, like conspiracy theory documentaries. But not. I wasn't paying attention to what was going on in Congress daily, like daily, just like past shady shit that they did in the past, right? So. Uh, then Trump's running for president and, and I didn't know anything about fucking Trump. I don't know. I don't have, I don't, wasn't a Trump fan at all. I never watched his TV show once. All I knew he was, is a, a rich, you know, uh, arrogant, pompous, you know, loud mouth. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. And then I heard he's running for president. I thought that was funny because I didn't know anything about him. I thought, ah, that crazy dude's running for president. Ah, what a trip. And then you hear from different people. Oh, he's fucking hilarious. Oh, he's crushing. He's, he's getting, you know, and then Joe would say, dude, that Donald Trump, he's, you know, he's, he's blowing up. I'm like, whoa, that's fucking crazy. A, 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 a TV uh, reality show fucking dude is blowing up, whatever. I was thinking that, okay, that's the sign of the end. You know what I mean? It's Donald Trump's going to, he's, he's uh, going to be, you know, he might be president shit. So I was thinking, I was not paying attention, but I, I was paying attention. Just randomly, people would say shit. Do you hear about Trump? He's so racist. So then I thought Trump was racist. You hear Trump? He's fucking an asshole. I'm like, yeah, Trump's an asshole. I was that guy. I wasn't paying attention. I was just going by what people were hearing that were watching the news, right? So you think you're not paying attention, but you are indirectly. So you're going to believe the mainstream if you're not paying attention. If you're not paying attention, you believe the mainstream, you, even though you don't know it. That's the way it goes. They love it. They love that you're not paying attention. What do you think football and movies are? And they know everybody has a, every week they got a couple hours of free time. And they go, damn, let's fill that up with as much shit. So they're not paying attention to what's going on in Congress, right? So I thought everyone was full of shit. So then um, what one thing I knew, I knew like the Clintons were bad people, you know, and they were, you know, and uh, um, they're, Hillary Clinton's been involved in a lot of crazy shit, and um, allegedly. So <laughs> once, then, the, then I started paying attention. Then I started paying attention. I started paying attention. I started paying attention. I, I, started, I started paying attention a little bit, and then I realized like, shit, everyone's going after Trump now. Everyone's talking shit on Trump. I thought, hmm. And then I go, and then I would ask friends, I go, well, what did he say that was racist? Because I believe it. I go, I heard it. I'm like, what, what was that racist shit? So then I started doing some research. I go, where's this racist shit that he hates Mexicans? And then when you find out, when you're a Mexican and you find out the truth, you want to know the truth? Find out. He didn't call Mexicans filthy animals. He called gang members filthy animals. But CNN and CNBC, they all push that shit. So they have the power. They're like the big media. So every Mexican's fucking, they want Trump dead, dude. I saw Guns N' Roses in Mexico City. They had a Trump fucking doll that they ripped apart. They want dead. That's how powerful that shit is. How crazy is that? So then I started looking into him. Like, dude, look at all the people that I know confirmed, like, me personally, I confirm from my own research that we're bad and they're all going after Trump. I'm like, hmm, there's something wrong here. So I just started listening to Trump talk and I started listening to all his speeches. I'm like, no wonder he's blowing up. This motherfucker's not saying that same old shit all these other politicians for decades been saying. This guy's fucking raw. He's getting to the fucking real shit. And then I started paying attention just you know a little bit more. And then you, you gotta think about it like this. They want people to think that everything is fucked up and everything is bad so that they don't look into it. I don't pay attention to it because everything's all fucked up and that's how I was. But everybody's not fucked up. If everybody was on the same team, there wouldn't be need for bribery. There wouldn't be need for suiciding. People are getting killed and shit. When someone gets killed because they're investigating some certain people and they get suicided and they make it look like a, like a obvious not suicide, they said suicide, he fucking took three bullets to the back of the head. Suicide. That's a message. Shut the fuck up. We own the corner. The corner put suicide. 
and there's three bullets in the back of his head. That's a message. It's a gangster message. Shut the fuck up. We own corners. Standard. You own the corners. No corners not owned. Maybe maybe a few are good. But um, when it comes to politics, when you start paying attention to the the actual people like the senators and the congressmen and all you start to realize okay who actually cares and who is full of shit and the ones that are all full of shit really quick you start separating like oh shit all these people that they're all saying the same shit they're all pushing the same shit all of them that same shit I already know five of those motherfuckers are crooked as fuck. So, so you can't you can't believe in. And then the other side, you hear the other side, and there's good people out there: Jim Jordan, Radcliffe, Matt Gates, Devin Nunes, Trey Gowdy. These people, you, when you start paying attention, like the, this is why people get suicided. This this is why they get blackmailed because there's there would be no reason to blackmail anybody if everybody was on the same team. They're always good people, but you know what? The bad people just took over and put every put bad people in 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 powerful spots, important spots where nothing could get done. And there's a bunch of good people in there, in the, for decades trying to fucking. They were just you know you know the bad the bad people took over. And right now what's going on? The good people are pushing back. That's what this is all about. The yeah. good people got, they needed a fucking lead singer with balls. They needed a lead singer with balls that, to do a world tour. And who did they, they, Trump was the guy. They go, Trump is perfect. Trump is perfect. He wants to change all these deals and, and go after corruption anyways. So um, Trump is not uh, a politician. He hasn't been in politics ever. He's never been a politician. He's just a businessman. And everybody knows that uh, there's mad, mad corruption in politics, and there has been forever, at least decades, at least since when George Bush Sr. took over. That was it. I mean, look at we, what we found out already. Look at what, as Americans, what we found out. We found out that our own country, whoever, I don't know who, killed Kennedy. Yep. We found out so far, history has told us over the years, it's out there already, that the mafia put the Kennedys in the White House so they could get Cuba back. That was the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mafia was promised that if they put the Kennedys in the White House, they'd take down fucking Fidel, they get their casinos back, and it would be business as usual. Yeah. Okay, we all know this as Americans. They've told us already. They didn't tell us who killed Martin Luther King, but they already told us that the Kennedys were pretty much a fucking inside job. Both of them, they killed the one, and they killed the fucking brother. Now, you're 50 like me. You already know these things. And then you see the ball, how it dropped on one of the things that I think about it now, and I watch it, and I get entertained. But I got to tell you something. While I watch this, my insides get mad because I was part of it, and it was part of almost killing me, was when I watched shit like Narcos. What episode are you up to? Uh, Four or five. You're moving like a fucking snail. Once a week. Once a fucking Once, week. On Sunday nights, me and the wife, that's our thing. We but watch it's Narcos. It's so weird how, how even that worked out. <laughs> it's so weird how even that worked out. Yeah. That our own country with Mexicans, the government, Kiki Camarena, and when you find out all these truths and you go, uh, wait, wait a second, you, we, you put in 70 tons of cocaine on one load. 70 tons. It got to the point where they were flying jetliners in filled with coke. Everybody was in on it. Mm -hmm. And the Mexican government <coughs> gave zero fucks. Zero fucks the Mexican government. Because our government was doing it. So what can they yeah. do? What are they going to do? It's, they might as well jump in you, on it now too. Now when you sit here and when you watch what's going on today, you shouldn't be in shock. Exactly. You shouldn't be in shock. How long? What? How, what's it gonna take? Look what's happened the last exactly. fifty years in exactly. front of my fucking eyes, and you're sitting there like, oh, that's why when I watch this shit now, it's like one big Telemundo novella. Yeah. Every night. Last night I was bored to pieces, and I was scrolling through. Me and my wife were talking. And I put on that John Oliver show. I was dying of laughter. I mean, I never watched that show. I just put it on for a half hour to goof on the car carnivore diet, but. The carnivorous disease, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> fuck it, you know. Carnivore virus. The carnivore by virus and fucking Trump and the CDC and how Trump walked out while the CDC guy was talking and shit. 
when he gave it to Mike Pence and my, you know, you just see this whole thing and you're like, what the fuck? This is like one big novella. Yep. Yep. It's it's uh, super entertaining. I suggest. No, I got enough going on in my oh. world. It's, Don't it's, suggest dick. And you're paying them. They're taking your money. Oh, no they're, shit. They're no taking shit. your money. If that doesn't bother you, it bothers me. No shit. Me. How can I stop them from taking my money? You got a powerful podcast, man. You could make. You could just talk about it. Talk about I don't want to get suicided. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> talk about what? Um, look things, at this things thing. you learn. Thank things you, you look learn. At this fucking thing. This is what I was leading to. Look at this thing that we all just watched in front of our eyes. We saw a guy go into jail, try to, they tried to suicide him a week. Jeffrey Epstein. They put him in yeah. another prison thing, then they moved him. I watched the 60 Minutes, I read the thing, and it's just fucking horse shit. Yeah. Like, I've been in jail. Do you understand me that I've been in jail? I've been in county. I've been in county. I've been in fucking state. I was a member. When you got arrested for kidnapping, kidnapping is automatically a federal offense. Yeah. So they put you in federal holding. I've been in every pen through the fucking system. The only way you hang yourself is when somebody kills you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. people hang themselves. They do. Yeah. They really do. But in today's society, with the technology you got, now think about you're this. gonna tell me there wasn't one guard with a screen. Joey Diaz has a screen here. I don't have no money. Cameras didn't screen. work when that happened. Yeah. I, think about and look, it. And think about the media. They're leaving it alone. Okay, so. Right? Cameras didn't work. Cameras didn't work, but they're still rounds. Yeah. They're still rounds. Well, he got pulled out of Suicide Watch that night. Why? It's 72 fucking out. You know, it's stuff that a guy like me really knows. And I go, Really? Really? You're going to tell me some guy fucking iced himself? I've seen shit at the county jail system that would make... Bro, I remember when I was in county waiting against... When I had already been sentenced, I was in the county jail that a guard would tell me every day, Diaz, whatever you need. And I thought he was tricking me, so I didn't fuck with him. But I did send him to the supermarket for me. I would send him to the supermarket. Me and this other guy from New York had him, you know. But I wouldn't get alcohol or nothing like that. He would tell me right up for twenty five a week. Yeah. I'll bring you whatever I you think, want. I think I think all that is. I get potato chips, frozen pizzas. You know, like I live. I can watch movies at night till eleven and have a snack. You know, but I never. I know that there was people in there snorting coke at the county jail level in Summit County, Colorado. This is God's country. There was a guard there that everybody knew. For small 25 a week, you get free food every night. You get snacks every night. Fuck. And you stay up watching TV all night. They put you in a cell with a TV all night. I signed up for the program. He even asked me, do you want blow, heroin, <laughs> coke, pills, whatever you want, you booze, whatever the fuck you want. So... But I also know that they checked on me. Counts, even in fucking, even at Camp Georgia West, my counts were hourly. Yeah, I don't think Because I still remember thinks, tripping. Yeah, I don't think I, anybody thinks he committed suicide. I still, I still remember tripping. I still yeah. remember doing tripping. I still remember doing acid in prison. So obvious. That I was doing acid in prison? No, that he, oh. that he, that he uh, didn't kill himself. <clears throat> That's well, that's the only drug they couldn't test you for in prison. Because they have to do it through your spine. So we could eat acid. The, 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 the urinalysis then didn't detect the acid or the, or the speed in acid. So we were popping acid. So we would always have on a timer that we were going to see that guard every hour on the hour. And he was there every hour on the hour. Sometimes he cut back and come back every half hour. So don't fucking tell me. Don't yeah, no, tell me. Nobody and this is was, 1988. It's obvious. So obvious. Today's technology... The cameras are out. That's what you're trying to sell me on. You know how deep Epstein is, man? Oh, my you know God, no. It has to. And look at the, the chick has disappeared. Dude, not only did he. not Where's only, the chick? No, uh, no one knows. Nobody knows. And no one cares. Why? You know why? Why doesn't the media care? You don't think there's some kind of connection there? 
Why wouldn't the media be all over Ghislaine Maxwell? Think about that. Why wouldn't the media call for her to get arrested? You, you think why hasn't she been brought in for questioning? Her father, her father's Robert Maxwell. He, uh, Jeff Epstein took over for him. He, you look into that motherfucker, Robert Maxwell. That guy was huge in uh, his job was he worked for all the intelligence agencies. The main one he worked in uh, for Israeli intelligence. They ended up killing him uh, allegedly, but while he was alive, his job was to. Uh, blackmail politicians, um, CEOs, scientists, celebrities, sports athletes, as many different powerful people as you can. Like if your if your job is to blackmail people, like y- you would definitely like ask uh, who are the most important people to blackmail. Like we're blackboarding just blackmailing random people, just picking people out of the mall and just we're gonna blackmail you. No specific people with power. Who's who's uh, when you're on that side of when you're on the dark side, uh, a good person to blackmail would be a politician for sure. Right. No one's going to disagree with that. Uh, Celebrities for sure. Um, Anybody with power, with influence for sure. Um, uh, uh, Also scientists. He was blackmailing scientists. Why would you blackmail scientists? What what would be the purpose there? If you had to guess. To shut them up about something. To say whatever they need them to say about this uh, scientific experiment Experiment. or that scientific experiment or these tests or those tests for these drugs or for whatever. Blackmailing scientists is huge. Massive. If you're in that um, dimension, that dark dimension, right? So that's what Robert Maxwell did. And that's what Jeffrey Epstein's doing too. Jeffrey Epstein, dude, he was balls deep in the scientific community. So do you think he's still alive or he got murdered? He could be alive. Who? Jeffrey Epstein. No, he's dead as disco. So you think he is dead? He just didn't. He's dead as disco. He's dead. That's too tough of a disappearing act. The family hired Dr. Bowden to come in there and do a separate autopsy. He went on national fucking sixty minutes and said that could be bullshit, man. The whole they're all they're, they could he could be blackmailed because doctor. listen, we got videotape of you with some underage chicks. Go up there and said you did an autopsy. Go up there and do an Let autopsy. Doctor Bowden comes legitimate, bro. That's why they brought, <laughs> that. That's why they. Brought you don't that think it'd be a good idea to blackmail him? No, no. He can He he no. went against everything. Okay. He went against everything. He said it couldn't have been suicide. But everyone's no saying that, though. But everybody's saying that. Like that. that. That's actually no. the mainstream. Yeah. The mainstream is that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill no, himself. No, no, no. They, they, they murdered him. But yeah, for they sure. Murdered. They murdered him. They, but, but he's, but the he's one so that said, deep. He's so deep. Dope. He's so deep that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they just faked his death. Like, where's his body at? Like, who saw his body? Like, a couple people and they say it. How hard is it to pay them off? How hard is it to blackmail people? That's what they do. That's why they blackmail people. They're going to blackmail because you're going to get in front of that fucking mic. That's why you're going to get in front of that mic. Nah, that, but, dead but men I don't know. Don't, dead men don't tell tales. I'm just saying I don't, that know. Mother, that I don't know. That motherfucker was in deeper than He deep. could for sure be dead. He's he dead could for sure disco. be dead. He's he dead as disco. Yeah. You know. Dead men don't tell no tales. I just Always don't know. That, that I just don't know. Why take a chance? I don't He's know gone. shit. They, they ice them. They gun you. Yeah. They gun you. They, they he was connected to a lot of shit. A lot of shit. A lot of shit. A lot of shit. And that and think about think about how the media has has covered this. They just they want it to go away. No, it just went away on yeah, its own. They want to go away. They went away. And what on about what about like the Me Too movement? How come? What about Virginia Roberts? Virginia Roberts. They're talking about Me Too. She's the one who's a. Uh, uh, constantly uh, going out there and making covered. Harvey Weinstein was the was the poster child for Me Too. Yeah, no, but what I'm talking they about is the kid. Way. The kids, they're not gonna kill the, him. The kids he ain't got nobody that to Epstein on. fucked with. What about those kids? You know? Oh, he he fucked with a bunch of them and the, the estate. No one cares the about money. them though. No one gives a shit about them. Well, people see it. Listen, Americans are gullible and stupid, but there's people <laughs> like yourself and people like myself that know we're not stupid. I'm not stupid. I just I'm just trying to raise a little girl. So I could I could actually focus on this shit and talk about it constantly and and school people on it or whatever. But I think I, I always think that I think the way most people think. It's bullshit. Look at everything that they thrown at us. The last I still remember there was a sparse time of cocaine, like in eighty six, when Coke changed. Coke changed. It went from tasting a certain way in the late 70s to a different way in the mid-80s. It changed. Did that have anything to do with crack? 
it, no, it had to do with ether being smuggled into Colombia. The toughest thing wasn't smuggling the coke into the United States. It was smothering the ether into Colombia. Mm. So Colombians had to stop coming up into the United States and processing the leaves in the States because they ran out of ether. So they started processing it with turpentine and gasoline, and it had a weird effect. Can they grow coca leaves like in greenhouses in the United States? I don't think so because of the altitude. Hmm. See, I don't know why. I heard it was something to do with the altitude, but the altitude's got to be the same of a point like Aspen, Colorado or I, something I bet like they can that. make some kind of greenhouse they can to make grow some coca leaves, right? And I, and I, uh, trust me. I think. You looked into it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I know Back that, in the day. I know the that day. I have access to leaves. If I want to buy coca leaves, somebody mentioned to me on the side. What do you do? Put it in your mouth and chew on it? Just put it in your mouth and like chew on Incas? it. Like the Incas? I got mad at Ari. He went down there. I go, that was the main purpose. If you're going down there, stupid, was to eat the leaves to see how that it's a trip. It's like a ceremony when you eat the fucking leaves and chew on them and swallow them. It goes into your system. That's what makes those farmers farm all day. They go into like a fucking haze. It's like, remember when Joe caught on to, remember when Joe read the paragraph of what happens to you when you eat an edible? It goes in your liver and it becomes CTE, one. And then remember, he, he went into it, he read it over and over again. He had it down. When it goes into your liver, it becomes CTE, one. A, a, a highly polite, he read it and studied it to the T. He, right now, we'll call him and say, what, you, <laughs> what does edibles do to you? And they'll tell you the same thing. <laughs> and they go into your liver and it becomes a carnivinoid and it does this and all this shit. <laughs> what are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, but that's what that's we, what fucks. Coke of it from the 80s. Yeah, Coke from the 80s. It turned, and that was when the government got involved. Once the, our government said, whoa, these motherfuckers are making some serious money. We need some of that paper. And they sh that's when they jumped on Noriega. Yeah, they needed money, they black, needed black ops money. Black that's ops what they money, did. That, that was it. They were running that, guns, running it, drugs through Arkansas while Bill Clinton was the governor. The governor, yeah. That's why he became president. They say, you let us use your state as a drop-off point for all this coke. I mean, they even put it in that movie, American Made. Barry Seal, he was the CIA pilot. There's books written on him. He was dumping it off in Mena, Arkansas while Bill Clinton was the governor. And George Bush Sr. was the president. And then guess oh, who became pre the next president? George Bush. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. What about the he scene? Had it, it was like he hooked him up. Dog, it was like a favor. What about the scene when he's an American me, Tom Cruise is making so much money as Barry Seal, and they finally arrest him, and they take him down to the police station. And he's like, you know what, man? You guys ever drive a Cadillac? I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy each and every one of you as a Cadillac. And they're like, are you trying to bribe us? And he goes, nah, I'm not trying to bribe you. He goes, I'm just trying to give you a little something for your efforts today. I'll tell you why. Because in about five minutes, that little district attorney lady's gonna come out of her office and she's gonna tell all you boys to go home and I'm gonna walk on out that door. And they're like, sure. And all of a sudden she comes out, goes into the prosecutor, whispers in his ear, we gotta let him go. And they're like, what, what? And he goes, I told you fellas, you should have took the Cadillac. Uh, That's just like, he was yeah. connected all the way yeah, to the- he was working for them. And it's like, he's one of us. shut him down and they threw everything away and they fucking, the nephew, remember the nephew when he tried to, when he dropped the nephew off? That's when they were pipe bombing people. That's when they were bombing people and they bombed that guy from Aspen, Colorado too. His name was Stephen Graybo. He was about to testify against him, and they put a car bomb in his car. That's what the Colombians are doing then. And supposedly, it was the white guy from Cocaine Cowboys. He later on wrote a book called American Desperado, and he wrote all the bombings he was paid to do for the cartel. Very interesting yeah. shit. Allegedly, Epstein has been involved in high level shit for a long time. He was he had a job in the Iran Contra scandal. Like he was all up in it back then. Apparently, they found a, um, a heli like his helicopter uh, had um, a 
plates on it that were from the U.S. government. So I don't know what that means exactly, but he was connected, man. He was he had a, he was doing something for uh, multiple governments for a very long time. He wasn't just videotaping old politicians having sex with minors. He was doing a lot of other shit. So like when Eddie, when you came in, you were saying like how the history books they all every, every country says, oh, we're the best. Is there somewhere we can move now? Like, is there a country somewhere that isn't doing all this shit? Like, or is every country doing all this stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where you'd run to. But I thought about that. If I had to leave, like, fucking Iceland, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. (coughs) It's depressing. I don't know where to run to. But, you know, all I care about is... My family, my wife, my son, uh, my tax money, like where it's going. That's why I care now. It's like, that's my motherfucking money. And these motherfuckers are stealing it. And I, I want to pay attention. I want to know what the fuck's going on. That's my money. And on top of all that, it's so entertaining following what's going on. Because it is like a movie. We're fucking living it. And it affects our lives directly. You know, gun control affects our lives directly. Our taxes, that affects our, it's like watching uh, uh, your favorite series. Every day there's a new episode. Every day there's a new episode. Uh, can you imagine if Game of Thrones every fucking day? Sopranos every fucking day. Those, it is. It's going, there's one going on right now. And you can pay attention to it and learn about all the characters. Because it would take you a long time to learn uh, all the characters' names in Game, Game of Thrones. Like if someone just got into Game of Thrones now, it could be until season two or three before they got everyone's names. That first episode, they're not going to remember anybody's names. Second episode, they're, not, they're barely putting it together, the second episode. You know, that's how um, DC is too. There's a lot of good guys and a lot of bad guys. And you got to, it takes a while to keep track of them and remember their names, put their faces to names and realize who the, the good guys are, the bad guys are. Now, if Trump is a big psyop, if this is all a big psyop, then, you know, it could be because, you know, um, conspiracy theorists are basically saying one thing. There's psyops going on all over, all over the fucking place. Everything's a psyop. Everything's there's fake shit going on everywhere. Now, Trump is not a politician. He comes in, he's, busting out their scams they're attacking him it appears that he's a good guy it appears that he is listen to what he's saying actually listen to him it appears that he has a real heart it appears that he cares about his family his sons and his daughters it appears that way it appears that like the left want him gone they're trying to ruin it appears that they're framing him all that but you know if it turns out that it was all an act and Trump and Hillary really like each other and they're just playing a role, that's a psyop. So they got me. Motherfuckers, you got me. You got me. It doesn't mean that every that the it doesn't mean that I was wrong about the government. It means I was fucking right again. They just tricked me. But I don't think it's a trick. I think this is real. I think the hate between the left and Donald Trump is real. I think they're really trying to destroy him. I think they tried they gave him Russia. They gave him you know, fucking, they had a girl, they were, you know, they get like with Kavanaugh, like that judge that he, he put in to the Supreme Court, they throw out rape and shit. They just said, ah, this chick said you raped her. You know what I mean? They don't give a fuck. They're going to throw rape at you. Just like make shit up. They don't care. They're just making shit up. The girl that they brought out that said, ah, Trump raped me like 20 years ago. They got her on CNN and Anderson Cooper's like, oh, tell me all about it. Trump's going down. Tell me how, what happened? You know, start from the beginning. And then halfway through the story, they thought they had, they thought they had Trump. She starts going loony, live on CNN. She goes, she goes, I think, she said something like, uh, women kind of get turned on by rape. They have rape fantasies. And Anderson Cooper goes, uh, um, what? And she starts saying crazy shit like that. They were, and then they go like, cut, 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 boom. And then you never heard from that girl again. She was gone. <laughs> so, dude, they're, if they're willing to frame the president, dude, fuck, that's scary shit. That's scary shit, man. So I'm, I'm very entertained by it all. You know, if they got me, if, they, if it's a sop and they got me and Trump's really some Zionist shill, like people are saying, um, if that's true, you know, because I don't believe anything 100%. Uh, then they got me. And then it just proves that I was right. 
there, there's psyops going on all over because that's an elaborate psyop. Because that's a psyop. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good one. When they got, they put if Q is a psyop because Q is an, an information dissemination program. So Trump knew that the media is going to fucking bury him. So he needed a way to to uh, communicate with people that really just want truth. They want their family. They want their guns. They want freedom of speech. They, true Americans that aren't corrupt, that just want the best for their families. So that's what, that's what patriots are. Patriots are we care about our country first, our family, our kids, family unit. You know, God is important. You know, you got to do the right thing, family values. So Q is a way that Trump is communicating with every all the patriots. That's what Q is. It's been going on for three years. People thought it was fake. The the mainstream so afraid of the fact that the Trump administration is communicating uh, and uh, without the media, because if you all you got was uh, from Trump was what the media was giving you shit. Of course you think he's racist. Of course you think he's fucking insane because they're taking everything out of context and putting everything together, making him look crazy, making him look like he's gonna fucking destroy the world. Meanwhile. If you're paying attention, he's actually trying to, he's not a politician. So we all know politician, but the politics have been corrupt for decades. Look at Pelosi's been in politics for decades. Schumer, Nadler, all of them. Man, Pelosi got millions and millions of dollars. Maxine Waters been in politics forever. We all know politics is corrupt. Donald Trump is not a politician. So when he comes in, go, oh, how could you de- defend Donald Trump? Didn't you say government is corrupt? Yeah, yes, he's not part of the government. He's brand fucking new. He's been in three years. And guess what? He turned around the economy. You know what I mean? He's, he's fixing these trade deals. Companies are moving back to the... I don't, I don't you know, know what I mean? what the fuck's going on. But I know everywhere I go, I see cranes. Yeah. And I know every comedy club is packed every yes. fucking weekend. The economy's booming. Okay? I and know he, that. People are paying $300 to go see Guns N' Roses. Yeah. But I know they're going to pay 500 to see Metallica. Not Metallica. Uh, Van Halen and well, not Van Halen, the other Motley Crue and yep. Poison, bigger than ever. You know, everything's now, bigger than ever right this, now. Jiu Jitsu's bigger than ever. You know, I mean, I'm, I feel bad if this coronavirus is a hoax or whatever because Guns and Roses, a lot of people have canceled their Asian legs of their tours, like they've just canceled them. Even the Korean boy band canceled them. You know. So baby metal. Japan, There's a bunch of little Japan, tiny fucking, Japanese Japan chicks. And fucking Disneyland is closed. You know, uh, you know this fear is this could go either way. So yeah, I, I think it's going to just another. Ebola, I hope it just goes, another Zika. You, you, you know, watch. I got to go to New York. I don't think anything's going to happen. I'm fucking concerned. Five and a half hours in a point. Thousands and thousands of people die of the flu every year, and one has died of coronavirus so far. Even if, even if they say, "Oh, the, it's it's up to four hundred and fifty people have died from corona," they can make that sound fucking crazy. Four hundred and fifty, but it's nothing when you look at uh, how many people die a year of, of the flu symptoms. People dying all over the place of flu. So you can make five hundred. Sound crazy. Even four thousand you know you know four thousand right? would sound crazy. Like I told Lee, a fucking dog ate a bat and they seen a fucking like I, I say to you all the time, Chinese people can solve a Rubik's Cube, but they'll fucking eat a dog. Who does that shit? Who looks at a dog and says, <laughs> That's the best tasting fucking dish I'm gonna have today? Who would go kill a fucking dog and eat it? Yeah. They ate a dog. Yeah. You know, Bruce Lee ate a Liz in the Chinese connection. Remember in the cemetery? Remember when he runs away, they're looking for him? The, 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 the Japs are looking for Bruce Lee, and he goes to the cemetery, and the chick comes, and she talks to him in Chinese Connection. What is he eating? A fucking lizard. Okay? <laughs> you, you ever go to Chinatown, you see the shit that's hanging off the fucking things? Yeah. You see the things they eat? I wonder if there's country. They eat fucking fish eyes and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, something yeah. bad is going to fucking happen. So this all started with a fucking cat eating like a fucking bat. Like, you know? like a, a, That's what they say. That's what happened. And this motherfucker, Johnny Wu, says, I'm going to move for a fucking cat today. <laughs> and he sees his little yellow cat. <laughs> Dude, he you should do that on stage. Her. No, he calls little Johnny Wu over. He brings <laughs> her upstairs. He stabs her. You know, she's got cat blood in her fucking mouth. You know, those Japs, they'll eat the teeth and they'll eat the eyes for their heart on. They'll try anything. 
right? The word, don't they cut off? Wasn't there a thousand sharks swimming with no fins? Oh, man. Because they cut the yeah. fin off, they eat the fin juice, so yeah. their dick gets hard. Japs and Asians, whatever, they'll eat anything to fucking to make their dick hard. They'll try one of them. Dolphins. Dolphins, they'll eat anything. But how about, how about, uh, Hindu- balls? There's a restaurant in China, you go in and order like fucking spider balls. Or like a cab's balls to give you, to get some something's balls. Oh, I how, think you could eat a human's balls in China. Like if you yeah. go in the back and you know the cook, get cooked. <laughs> Listen, the, the, the cook is looking a little weak anyway. Stab them, marinate the balls. <laughs> but one. how about in India, cows are revered. They're like uh, sacred animals. Yeah. And uh, what do you think they think about us? Like we, that's all we eat is cows. Well, let me tell you something. I also know a preschool teacher, <laughs> and she had preschool little Hindu kids. And she said all they ate was hard-boiled eggs and some pickle juice, and their shits were the worst in the whole fucking school. But the girls weighed 30 pounds a piece, and they take a shit. They thought it smelled like a circus. Like it smelled like the fucking circus was in town and shit. I wonder if there's some countries out there that, uh, that, have, that use chickens as pets and they love chickens and they find out Americans fucking eat chickens and we have chicken slaughterhouses and then you go to Mexico. Chickens are your neighbors, right? <laughs> exactly. Chickens are your neighbors. You know Americans eat chickens? You give them a name, and one day when you things get fry bad, them. you kill that fucking chicken. You got fucking Kentucky Fried that, Chicken. That would be to me. Oh, Pollo Loco. That would be, bro, when I was a kid, I used to eat all the chickens from the Santeria things. Those chickens were fresh, Jack. <laughs> I would go right down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, like all That's those uh, ceremonies? Hey, can yeah. I take a piss real quick? Yeah, when okay. you do a Santeria fucking uh, ceremony. You're allowed to eat that? Yeah, you could eat it. Oh, my God. But they would never, like a rooster, they had all the birds that you don't want to eat. Pigeon, who the fuck wants to eat a pigeon? That's a bat, a pigeon is a bat without AIDS. That's all a fucking pigeon is, you know what I'm saying? That's all. I had no idea. Oh, we're definitely, this is the last podcast ever. Oh, I don't give a fuck. Who cares? What are they going to do? Throw me in jail? Why is that? Unless you're planning on getting the Rufalo virus or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> I want to thank Eddie Bravo. And I want to thank the flying Jew, but most importantly, I want to thank you savages for always uh, listening to the church and uh, supporting us. Real quick, the Church of What's Happened Now is sponsored by Zip Recruiter. Listen, hiring used to be hard. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, confusing review process, background checks. You got to meet people. Ah, Today, hiring is easy. And you only have one place to go to get it done, and that's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over a thousand of the web's leading job sites, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invite them to apply to your job. You could even add screening questions to their job listing so they can filter candidates and focus on the best ones. Listen, stop it. Whether you have a small business, you got 800 employees, you and I both know Zipper, you don't have the time. Time is money. You got to go sit with people, meet them for coffee, talk to them, smell bad breath. Forget that. ZipRecruiter is the way to go. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. The first day, one day. And right now, try ZipRecruiter for free, gratis. The church family can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. C-H-U-R-C-H. ZipRecruiter.com slash church. The smartest way to hire is with ZipRecruiter. Trust me, I'm telling you. Don't forget, next uh, Thursday, the 12th of March, I will be at Levity Live in Nyack. One show only. 8 o'clock, in and out of there on a Thursday night. No second show. Do what you got to do. March 27th, I'm at Arlington Theater in Santa Barbara. One show, do what you got to do. And beside that, where you at this month? Uh, March 19th in Pasadena at the I- Ice House, uh, Huntington Beach. With Sam Tripoli? With Sam, oh, Tinfoil. Oh, tinfoil. Me, me, and, me and Sam Tripoli. Huntington Beach, April 11th at the Rec Room. We're in Chicago, May 9th at uh, the Den Theater. Also Spokane and Tacoma, May 1st and May 2nd. Look at you going right up to Washington to get that condo. Tacoma's awesome. We did a 420. You know what we're doing? We're doing day shows on Saturdays, dude, and they're fucking fun, and we've been selling them out. It's crazy. Tacoma, that we're going back and doing another 420 show. I'm doing show. 420 at the comedy store. Uh, the, at night or during the day? At night. Okay. At 8 o'clock. What date does that fall on? Monday. 
Oh, okay. I'm okay. gonna light that place on fire. <laughs> Lee's gonna eat an edible and go up on stage. An edible, yeah, I'm sure. Two of them and go up on stage. It's nice. over. He doesn't know it. That's the only way he gets on that stage. That yeah. nice. <laughs> Two hundred milligrams of dye. Everybody. We're getting only professionals. You're you're up and you're doing a 420 show in Tacoma. That's uh, May 1st, and then Spokane. Oh no 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 May 2nd. That's a Saturday, May 2nd in Tacoma at the Tacoma Comedy Club. Spokane is that Friday, May 11th, May, May 1st. May 1st. You're doing some good things, brother. How Thank you. I appreciate that. Jiu-jitsu is better than ever, man. Ten We're planet. just growing. Ten planet. Somebody told me they moved somewhere in Jersey. That's cl- they have a new Ten Planet in Jersey. Newton. Newton, Newton, Newton Jersey. Newton and what else? Ooh, uh, there's two of them. Woodbridge. Woodbridge. Uh, we have Allentown now. That's Pennsylvania. Um, Bethlehem's been a force That's out there. They're, they're, yeah. the, they're the ones, you know, controlling that area. It's it's amazing. We got Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds coming up. Uh, not uh, this Sunday coming up. Uh, what is it? March eighth, Sunday at the Orpheum Theater downtown LA, five p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's on UFC Fight Pass. Combat Jiu Jitsu World's gonna be insane, man. It's gonna be fucking crazy. And we got the UFC on Saturday. Oh yeah. Are you oh, doing yeah. a fight companion? Oh no, Joe's working it. Yeah, yeah. Joe's, Joe's working, working it. Joe's working. It. Yeah. Great to see you. Great to see you, man. Best Thank to you. Your family. Do not forget. Thank you. Next May, uh, March twelfth, Nyack. And March 27th, the Arlington Theater in Santa Barbara. I'll see you motherfuckers next week. Have a great weekend. Stay black and be careful. Oh, shit.